All right, the seventh reason why Taylor Swift is basically Jesus. This is the best reason by far. And when I say best, I, I mean demented. But when the pedals came off, I wasn't disappointed. Somehow, she was more beautiful than I had imagined. Yeah, I just realized I can't do this anymore. I, I don't think I can make it through the rest of these. Um... If you want to support this channel, you can check out the link below. It says shop our merch. Howdy y'all, I'm Brylon. <laughs> Okay, I can do this. Howdy y'all, I'm Brylin. In this video, I wanna take a look at an article that was written by one of the biggest ministries on earth, a Christian ministry. Now, in all fairness, they used to be a much larger ministry, but have been declining faster than Uncle Jim Bob can butter a biscuit. And this video is gonna show you why that decline is happening. So here's the article. This is the literal name of this article, Seven Things Christians can learn from Taylor Swift's Eras Tour. Love is equality. So this was published by the Gospel Coalition. However, when you go over to the Gospel Coalition and type this in on their website, you will not find it because it was deleted. And you're going to see why it was deleted in just a minute. And I'm sorry. This is going to be extremely difficult to get through all seven of these things, if I'm being honest with you. And this is your fair warning that if you want a chance to never see this or hear this, this is your one chance. <laughs> I don't have that chance anymore. Now again, there's seven ways that the author of this article is going to uh, compare Taylor Swift to Christianity. Yeah, we're about to learn what being a Christian really is from this Taylor Swift. All right, so here's just the opening of the article. Now we're gonna try to get through all seven of these in a timely manner. So it starts with Taylor Swift's record-breaking Eras Tour movie releases in theaters today allowing masses of passionate Swifties and curious others who didn't attend a concert to glimpse into likely the most profitable music tour in history. I saw one of Taylor's Chicago shows this summer, and the spiritual connections were vast. Consider seven things Christians can learn from the Eras Tour and from what makes Taylor's shows so moving. Now, this is coming from, for context, Blake Glosson, who is a middle-aged man, who is also a pastor in training. So I think he knows a thing or two about Taylor Swift concerts. Now quickly, a little context about the Gospel Coalition. This isn't their first time doing things like this. I mean, in it, just in the recent past, they've completely embraced social justice in one way or another. They have articles comparing the magic in Disney movies to the power that Jesus had. However, let's set all that aside and give the Gospel Coalition uh, the benefit of the doubt. This article actually might give us something to learn. So uh, let's check it out. Now I must say all seven of these are gonna blow your mind, but the seventh one is by far uh, one of the most insane things I think you're ever going to hear. Number one, we were created to be seen and known. Part of what makes Taylor's music so powerful is that it leaves many saying, she gets me. Many feel her lyrics perfectly encapsulate their emotions and experiences and even help them understand themselves. The Eras Tour allows fans to draw near to the one person who seems to really know them. Of course, Taylor doesn't know 99.9% .9 of her fans, only foolish ones who think otherwise. Still, the joy Swifties feel in Taylor's presence Perhaps even catching a glance from Taylor herself reflects the joy of drawing near to the only one who knows and loves us perfectly. I don't know if I can do this.
Real quick, I just want to show you what he's comparing Taylor Swift to. This is Psalm 139. This is what David says about God. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my un formed substance. Sounds like Taylor Swift to me. Hey, real quick, would you mind hitting that thumbs up button? You know, when you like this video, it'll get pushed out to more people and it would help spread this message. It doesn't mean you're endorsing what's being written in this article. And also hit that subscribe button to join this community. Point number two, we were created to image greatness. Witnessing tens of thousands of Swifties flooding Chicago streets and shops hours before the show was surreal. You could spot a Swifty a mile away as they all dressed as her, while every Taylor follower reflected her differently, they all imaged her, corporately reflecting the full array of her dazzling ensembles. <laughs> Swifties appreciated Taylor's beauty more because of each other's imitations. The words, I love your dress, were exclaimed countless times that day, yet it wasn't just Swifties who noticed the shimmering attire of Taylor's fans. Taylor's dresses became more visible when worn by her followers. Through Swifties, the world saw Swift. Did this guy just create a religion? He ends this point with, One of the great joys and privileges given to Christians is to put on Christ. To put his sparkling attributes on display to the watching world. The amount of just like utter disrespect not just for the reader, but for God. So he cites Romans chapter 13, verse 14 in, in his point there. And it says, But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. But right before this, it says, Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies or drunkenness, not in sexual immorality, in sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy. And it even says, so then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now, there is no better way to do this than going to a Taylor Swift concert. Point number three, the object of our greatest affection will be more beautiful than we imagined. Each era show begins with a climatic unveiling of Taylor Swift from beneath a giant canvas of pink petals. The roar of the Chicago crowd when Taylor was unveiled was deafening. One of my friends reflected on this moment. Now check out how insane this is about to get. When Taylor was revealed, her appearance seemed flawless. I had high expectations. But when the petals came off, I wasn't disappointed. Somehow, she was more beautiful than I had imagined. My friend observed that this moment is a dim reflection of the day Christ is revealed to his followers. Not only will his beauty not disappoint us, but he will be infinitely more beautiful than we ever imagined. Is anybody else having trouble figuring out when he's talking about God or Taylor Swift? Now, to be fair, this guy was the general editor for the Taylor Swift study Bible. Credit the Babylon Bee for that picture. Oh yeah, and John says in Revelation when he turned and saw Jesus, he fell at his feet as though dead because he couldn't handle his glory. Point number four, we were created for reciprocal enjoyment with the object of our greatest affection. Taylor goes to great lengths to emphasize how much she enjoys her fans. It's not like Swifties love seeing Taylor while she merely tolerates seeing them. The enjoyment is reciprocal. For Swifties, the thought of playing a small part in Taylor's joy, even making her smile, makes the show sweeter. Believer, how much more does Christ enjoy you? And not as a number in a stadium full of faces, but as an intimately as a bridegroom enjoys his bride. Your existence is a true and constant ingredient in the divine happiness. Yeah, I just realized I can't do this anymore. I, I don't think I can make it through the rest of these. Um... So I just talked to my producer and he said I have to finish this video, whether I like it or not. I don't have a producer. It was just me bashing my forehead into my mirror. Point number five, we were created for transcendent belonging and community. 
many Swifties. <laughs> 40-year-old man is saying this, okay. Many Swifties marvel at the profound feeling of belonging they experienced gathering with countless others who shared the same object of admiration. The, the, the same object of admiration. Like the, the Taylor Swift is an idol up there, which she is. For, for most of these people at this stadium, they're looking at Taylor Swift and worshiping her, and she is the object of their affection. It's an idol to them. And it's just being played off here as like, it's basically like Jesus. This sweet connection transcends cultural background, socioeconomic status, personality, age, and era. Through one person, many are brought together. I feel like this is like the nicest, most polite heresy and blasphemy that I've ever heard. The temporary bond felt at era shows points to the eternal bond with the body of Christ. Only the Christian community is joined, nourished, and held together by a sinless and eternal head. While different swift eras bring together multiple generations of fans, Christ unites thousands of generations of God's people. Point number six, pettiness turns to gratitude in the presence of beauty. Every era show includes two decade-long fans, recent followers, and everything in between. Some purchased tickets months in advance, others scooped them up minutes before the show, yet once inside, no one says, how come she got in? That would be pure silliness. Everyone was too enthralled to see Taylor to have such petty thoughts. Yeah, so everybody at the Taylor Swift concert was just so enthralled by Taylor Swift that they were made perfect for those couple of hours and they didn't have a sinful thought. They didn't have any pettiness. They <laughs> This is the this is one of the most insane things I have ever heard in my life. This is TGC, everybody. Heaven will consist of lifelong Christ followers and deathbed converts, yet none will feel robbed or embittered. All will overflow with joy and gratitude simply to be in Christ's presence. So, literally, calling being in the Christ's presence in heaven rejoicing for eternity with Christ is basically what people were like in the Taylor Swift concert. Hey, All right, the seventh reason why Taylor Swift is basically Jesus. This is the best reason by far. And when I say best, I, I mean demented. We were created for unmixed, timeless joy. It's hard to explain what I felt when I woke up the morning after seeing Taylor Swift. The best way I can describe it is sad joy. For all the happy anticipation leading up to the show, the sorrowful realization that it was over tainted my joy. For many, that sorrow started earlier. A friend said, it felt like the experience was ending the moment I woke up the day of the concert. My joy was ending as it was starting. She said this pain continued into the show itself. As joyous as it was to see Taylor, we all grieved as we celebrated because we knew the joy would soon be gone. I just, I, I just need a moment. Proverbs 10.22 says, The blessing of the Lord makes rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. Unlike the joy of seeing Taylor Swift, which is mixed at every point with sorrowful longing, for something deeper and longer lasting, the blessings of the Lord enriched without sorrow. Now, I want you to see how he ends this article. It, abs the, the contradiction here is just out of this world. Check this out. Praising the praiseworthy is fitting and pleasant, yet no created being, including Taylor Swift, deserves worshipful praise. So you just wrote an entire article worshiping and praising Taylor Swift, essentially. And then you're claiming that Taylor Swift doesn't deserve that worship and praise that you personally just gave her. Once again, makes sense. Taylor's music can awaken our longings, but cannot ultimately satisfy our longings. Only Jesus can do that. And union with him brings no sweeter music. Worshiping a woman, she has completely flipped her lid and abandoned 
anything and everything that she's ever known about truth in order to be loved and accepted and embraced and worshipped by the world, by society. She has sold her soul. She has abandoned all morality. She has abandoned all truth. Yet we're supposed to look at her and say, yeah, man, her story sounds a lot like Jesus. Hey, let me know your thoughts about this article in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. And hey, would you mind hitting that subscribe button and joining this community? I would love to hear from you regularly. And please hit that thumbs up button as well. You know when you like this video to get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread this message. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.